guys, it's Eddie and today I am back with another movie that I have been absolutely aching to see and I finally got to see it on Friday, opening night. It is of course Bill Condon's Beauty and the Beast, the live action remake starring Emma Watson, Luke Evans, Dan Stevens, Josh Gad, Emma Thompson, Kevin Kline, Ewan McGregor, Ian McKellen, the list is endless and I must say with a cast like that I had very very high hopes for this movie right from the get-go. Now before I begin I just want to like have a little rant um, and that is mainly because I'm a very very big Emma Watson fan um, and I have been ever since I was little because I was a huge Harry Potter fan so she was kind of like a role model for me the entire time that I was growing up and I followed her work ever since that she left Harry Potter. Now I've seen a lot of people sort of talking about her with regards to her role as Belle and the fact that you know I still see people putting her in this box of oh well she's Hermione she'll always she'll only ever be Hermione and it's like well okay in that case Harrison Ford was only ever uh, Han Solo. No, he wasn't. He was also another huge character such as Indiana Jones. You didn't have that struggle of, with other actors, seeing them get past one particularly famous role. Not to the extent that I've seen with Emma Watson. I think it's kind of unfair because a lot of people are just placing her in this box and I, I kind of think it's unfair. I think we should definitely give her a chance and I think that she's done incredibly, incredibly well to break away like she has done from that very restrictive mould of being in um, a series as huge as Harry Potter and a role so defining as Hermione. But as I'm about to say, I think with roles such as Belle in Beauty and the Beast, even though they aren't like the biggest uh, they don't require the most amazing acting. She's really doing her best to branch out and I must say that I'm incredibly proud of her. So that was this, the end of my little rant about Emma, but let's get on to reviewing the actual film. Now, I think this film was so gorgeous. I've been waiting to see it for over a year now, ever since that I first heard that it was announced. And I'm so happy to say that the expectations I had of it were, were completely met. Um, Emma Watson was the most enchanting Belle. She was completely adorable, but adorable, but at the same time, unlike the cartoon version, the Disney cartoon, she was not a passive character. She was a real heroine. It was the Beast in the end, I suppose, who you saw really adopting those traditional sort of romantic. Um, expectations of um, you know watching and waiting for their love to arrive and I just got this really satisfying notion when watching Belle that she was a far more active character than you know we've seen in the previous cartoon she wasn't simply a princess she she felt like an independent woman and I was really glad to see that. Was she this dynamic warrior princess all of the time? No, there was a little bit of inconsistency with that but she was still very much making it clear that Belle really didn't need anyone but herself um, in order to lead um, a completely fulfilling life, um, especially at the beginning when she was talking to Gaston. She subverted a lot of the norms that we've seen with the traditional Disney princesses and I think it's important, extremely important that um, especially with the scenes where Belle is helping her father invent things, um, just those little touches, it's important that, that young girls are exposed to things like that because it's teaching them that it's okay to do all of those things. Those can be things that a woman can do too, not just a man. So I think by placing those themes into the film, I was really happy to see all of that. And I think that Belle was just the perfect role model um, for a little girl outside of the context of her falling in love with 
a, a prince who was, you know, a beast and all that stuff. She was strong, she was independent and entirely lovable. I think Emma Watson did an absolutely brilliant job and she was just wonderful, just amazing. I'm really, really proud of her. She really made the role her own. Now, moving on to the villain, uh, Gaston, I thought that Luke Evans was absolutely incredible. He fit perfectly into the role, you know, with this sort of pompous attitude, making everyone love him, want to look at him, being the centre of attention. He just had this air and grace about him that was just... Oh, it was sickening. He took on, initially, this really humorous persona. He was kind of a light relief. Um, but he slowly turned into, of course, the real beast, I suppose, of this tale. He was ignorant, he was callous, he was horrible. And um, he turned into someone that we all love to hate. Um, I thought he was, he was brilliant. I thought that the costume and the set design and just the whole look of this film was just beautiful. There was some really gorgeous, vivid CGI. I particularly liked the sort of CGI designs of um, the likes of Lumiere, uh, Cogsworth and Mrs. Potts and all the sort of enchanted castle ensemble. I thought that they were really interesting. They were completely different from the cartoon. They were incredibly ornate and beautiful and I just they were just absolutely fascinating to look at. Um, and I thought it contained some really gorgeous designs. Um, what I also loved was the musical numbers. I thought they were completely just so engaging and so much fun. Um, I thought that each actor who sang the songs did a wonderful job. Um, I know that Emma had to go through um, quite rigorous uh, singing lessons in order to sing her numbers in the film, but she did a really good job. One song and performance that I did really, really enjoy and that stood out for me was Ewan McGregor as Lumiere's rendition of the infamous Be Our Guest. I thought that whole number was just absolutely incredible. It was so exciting, it was so much fun. And of course, we all know that Ewan McGregor's got a great singing voice and he brought it again to one of the best numbers of the film, in my opinion. It was kind of the one that we were all waiting for and he really, really did it perfectly. It was brilliant. Um, some pieces of dialogue with this film, I noticed, were lifted directly from the cartoon and there were some things that remained exactly the same, um, which is fine. I didn't really expect anything different. But what I loved about this film was that it really took you to new places and ex especially it developed much further the backstories of the likes of Maurice and Belle and Belle's mother and even the Beast um, that we didn't really know too much from watching the cartoon. And I think even though it remained a sort of fitting tribute, I think, to the cartoon, it also served as an expansion to this really beautiful enchanting universe that we all know and love and that we all grew up with from the cartoon so I thought that was brilliant it didn't spoil anything it wasn't too much it just added and cleared up a few things and a few questions that we might have had um, originally from the cartoon so I thought it served a really good purpose in that way because it did sort of tighten up a few areas that were a little bit unsure and a little bit vague um, from the film, the original cartoon. Now, one final thing that I have to say, and I will say, huge spoiler alert for this bit, um, so skip on ahead um, if you don't want to hear um, about a very specific moment in the film, if you want to watch it, you know, completely clear in your head, but this will be the only spoiler that I give in this review. Now, everyone knows that there is this infamous gay moment that everyone has been talking about and there's been a lot of controversy around and it involves um, Josh Gad as Gaston's sidekick LeFou, who was absolutely brilliant by the way. I must say he was hilarious. He absolutely shone in this picture and I thought he was great. But, um, I see some articles floating around at the moment that say that this as a sort of 
Disney's first truly gay moment was kind of a poor tribute. Um, and they say this because they've chosen to make LeFou the gay character. Um, and they say this is poor because he's a, just a bumbling, clumsy, idiotic sidekick. Um, but he's not in this film, actually. What I gathered from the film is that he started off kind of as Gaston's sort of mediator. He sort of reined him in. He, he protected him. He added some common sense to Gaston's cause. He sort of said, questioned him and say, are you sure you want to do that, Gaston? So it was kind of a little bit different to the cartoon in a way that he wasn't just a stupid idiot little creature just tailing after Gaston. Um, and LeFou's feelings for Gaston were both obvious, obvious and subtle throughout the film. Um, and I thought it was actually really well done. Um, it was not honed in on or drawn upon too much. It wasn't sort of said aloud. There was just kind of this understanding in the film that this was completely normal, which was wonderful. Um, I didn't really expect it from it. I thought it was going to be like this huge thing, but it wasn't, which was really nice, actually. Um, and the thing is with LeFou, aside from the cartoon, very different to the cartoon, he undergoes this change of heart with regard to Gaston throughout the movie that actually is shows that he's incredibly smart and he realises where he realizes where he's gone wrong and where his his loyalties lie, his allegiance is in the wrong place basically. And actually he becomes a hero in his own right. So I don't really get these articles that are like, oh well, it's not really that much of a, a fitting like first gay moment if it's just idiot LeFou. Well, no, because Josh Gad's take on the character and the way that the character was written was incredibly nuanced and and the moment itself, which happened at the very, very end of the film, was sort of unspoken, it was subtle. Was it huge? Could it have been huger? Sure, perhaps. Of course it could have. But at the same time, I think this is the beginning of something that is incredibly important. Um, and it's the start of something that can, can be incredibly important for, you know, bringing LGBT characters to the forefront of movies, um, especially movies for children, um, which is, is brilliant. Um, so no, it wasn't as huge as I was expecting, but at the same time, I think it's the start of something that could be really beneficial and really great. So yeah, that was just my opinion on the, the controversy surrounding the, the gay moment in this film, as it is known. Um, but really, I have to say that I love this film. I think it was enchanting, because <laughs> um, you know, Disney magic. Um, it was really beautiful. I thought the performances were excellent. They were so much fun. Um, I thought the the much awaited um, performance of Belle by Emma Watson was beautiful and I really wasn't disappointed by this movie. There were a few moments of CGI, particularly with the Beast. I know I always talk about CGI but it's just something I can't seem to get past. It was a little bit um, sticky, it was a little bit um, kind of obviously iffy. Um, but this movie was gorgeous and I'm so happy to say that I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's a perfect family film so I'd recommend families, parents, take your kids to go and see it. It's really gorgeous and it's a lot of fun for everyone really. I think anyone would enjoy it to be honest. Uh, I know I did. So that is my take on Beauty and the Beast. I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. I know I have. Please remember you can always recommend movies for me to review by messaging me on my Tumblr or commenting below. But I would give Beauty and the Beast four out of five. Was it perfect? No, I don't think much, many movies are, but it was really, really enjoyable. And I hope you guys go out and see it. I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I did, but that is all for now. I hope to see you in the next review. Bye.